Welcome to the session. Greeting of the day. In today's class, we are going to see about in liquid penetrant testing. We are discussing about the procedures, uh, the equipments, uh, what are the various type of uh, penetrants and the characters, all those things uh, we have discussed. In continuous with that, uh, penetrant is one of the important uh, setup that we needed. Along with it, a developer, one of the other spray, we needed to do this uh, type penetrant inspection. So, in the previous classes, we have done now regarding uh, liquid penetrant inspection. So, common use of this uh, uh, penetrant inspections. Dye penetrant inspection is one of the most widely used uh, non destructive evaluation methods. It is, a, it is general, generally they are using in the NDT methods. So, commonly used NDT method. It is a popular in nature and it can be attributed to two main factors. Uh, for the easy of use, because uh, we need only simple a specimen, a cleaning, solvent. A penetrant, and then the develop. Only three cans are needed. We have to clean, we have to apply the penetrant, and we have to apply the developer through the penetrant will come and absorb by the developer. We can go to see the spots of cracks, then again post cleaning. So only three cans are needed. Therefore, it is easy to use and it has flexibility because it is a portable cans are there, you can take it anyway. So dipenetrant inspection, DPI, dipenetrant inspection offers flexibility in performing inspections because it can be applied in a large variety of materials ranging from automotive, spark plugs to critical aircraft components. So there are n number of uh, applications of this uh, technique. Anyway we are going in preliminary optimistic inspections, we, we try to find the crack. If it is not possible only we will go for the uh, next uh, methods. So this is for uh, have uh, n number of applications that we see. DPI or uh, dipenetrant inspection offers uh, flexibility in performing inspections because it can be applied in large variety of materials, any material, no problem. Any, any conductive, non conductive, uh, magnetic, non magnetic, any material, just like that we are pouring some color, uh, red color, and mm, developer we are applying in the white color, it is going to contrast and it is inspected. So it is independent of the material character. So uh, therefore, it is a uh, large materials. So, auto, maybe from the automatic spark plugs, small components to the uh, uh, critical aircraft of uh, large components also. So, from here to here, any components uh, may be a small or large. Small or large. Any components, any materials. Any material can be inspected. So, uh, likewise, that is what any material means may be metal, may be glass, may be ceramics, may be rubber, may be plastic, uh, any categories we can able to do the inspection. So, that uh, it is uh, almost in any materials, only restrictions, it should not be a porous one. So, we have already seen what is porous. So, if it is uh, taking a sample, like a sponge material, we can take it. If it is a sponge material, you see. I have taken one sample and on the sponge we have some por uh, porousness of holes everywhere likewise uh, likewise some sponge having some porousness okay, holes cavity are there now I am applying a penetrant I have applied the penetrant over there what happens this penetrant a high intention only to find the crack somewhere in the middle what happens let us assume this is the crack it flows over there because it is porousness, it again falls over there, it falls over there. So here also it is going down. It is also due to porousness, it is having interconnect. The whatever the printer what I am applying, it is not staying back on the crack, it's not staying back on the cavity. Because cavity is porous and it is interconnected, it keep on going down the direction. So it is a, this uh, visual type, type the type printer inspection cannot be done on the porous material. Other than that, any material, metals, aluminium, copper, steel, titanium. Glass or many ceramic materials or rubbers or plastic, same material can be uh, inspected through this uh, dye penetrant inspection. So, what are the we can do? Dye penetrant inspection can be able to detect all discontinuities. What are these all, all which means uh, all discontinuities which are uh, we have to keenly have to know are open to the surface. It means uh, we need some opening on the surfaces 
this is the surface and the sample is here like this and this is the thickness. So the opening should be here. When the opening is uh, related to surface, you can maybe detect. Water may be, may be uh, in the forging and classing is maybe cracks or laps or external bits, maybe on the rolled product, uh, any, any, which is related to surface cracks. Maybe cracks again on the rolled cracks, forging cracks. Similarly, the welded cracks also available. So seams, laminations, hot airings, porosity, blow holes, sinkages, uh, casting cold shuts, which is uh, this are belong to uh, casting defects, which is related to the surface. I am not telling about the inner the subsurface defects. In the well, you see, maybe cracks, porosity, undercuts, overlap, lack of fusions, lack of penetrations, uh, pinholes, any. This all belongs to surface discontinuities. And maybe a fatty cracks, maybe a quincher cracks, maybe grinding cracks, maybe overload and impact cracks. During grinding, you see, we use grinding operations like this. Sometimes may not may be uniform, sometimes may not be uniform, therefore, the grinding operations may. May create some irregular surface, uh, not smooth surface. So that irregularity is also possible to find because it is a it's a bulge, it's a small uh, bulge will be there. It is a surface only, but it's a bulge it's a surface. So there also pinhole will form, and uh, we can able to put uh, powder. We can find this uh, smoothness. So therefore, grinding cracks, and uh, due to the grinding so hard and heavily, it creates the cracks over there also. Is See, so here I have used a different type of defects detection. See, here in this uh, type of this inspections has been inspected here. Uh, similarly, you can able to see the cracks over there. Here also in the weld joint between two components, we have a uh, around uh, welding cracks is available there, which is detected by type of inspections. Normal print to use it. But in the next two pictures, we have used the fluorescent. High contrast the reflections, the refraction takes place. Therefore, there are some cracks are available. See, some cracks are available there. It is visible. We have inspected those things using an ultraviolet rays. So, this two are belongs to fluorescent ultraviolet. This three belongs to dye printed normal eye visual inspections. So, the typical printed indications the size of the indications or accumulations on the printed will show the extent of the defect and the brilliance will be measured in the depth. Deep cracks will hold a more penetrant. You see, uh, I am drawing a two. Oh, this is one surface defect, and this is also one surface defect. So when I am comparing these two, this is first one, this is second one. This occupies a less penetrant. Definitely, this occupies more penetrant as it is deeper. It, it can able to the cavity can occupy it takes more. Due to surface tension, so the capital reaction takes place immediately more and more liquid contents are going inside. Therefore, deeper cracks, so this is two. So this is two I am writing here. This deeper cracks will hold more penetrant and will broaden more brilliant. So when it is coming out, when it is coming out on the developer, coming out on the developer, this red color, this red color, see this, uh, this entire red. Uh, this entire red will, so this entire red will uh, come out as I, uh, in the developer, and it will be more brightly. It will involve at this point more bright. But at the same time, when I am comparing to the smaller one, uh, as because it is having a lighter penetrant, uh, it is not that much brighter. It is not uh, that much brighter. It is uh, less bright. So it is uh, when compared to it is high. less liquid, less brightness. Very fine openings can hold only a small amount of penetrant and uh, will appear in the fine lines. So this is small and uh, having container a small. Small one. I want to give some the interpretations of this uh, cracks. So somehow uh, this is uh, a called as a clustered porosity. Right here, okay, porosity. So this is about the coarser crack, coarse crack. It looks like this. If 
it is there, the liquid blue color or anything will be there as a, as a cavity when you print and apply. And it will be contrast looking. So here it is a crack on the partial weld lab. It's a tight crack. I will do lab. So likewise, uh, maybe porosity or coarser crack or tight uh, crack with the discontinuities are there. How it, uh, it looks, the interpretations we have given here, the casting porosity may be a spherical surface indications, the coarse casting coercion may be in the dotted lines, this looking cycle. So this looking, so th this cracks, you see, this cracks in the looking in the straight continuous line. So the crack may be a straight continuous surface lines. So hard tails may be a rugged lines in the variable width. Heat treated cracks, multiple irregular lines. A thermal cracks may be interconnecting lines. So see, maybe a th if there is thermal crack, maybe and th it may look like this format. It's a crack, but it's in the uh, intermediate uh, discontinuity is there. So it is not a continuous or coarser crack. So it is a form. This crack is form. we are interpreting. Uh, how it forms that that you have to avoid then the cracks will not come this this inspection or identification but we are trying to do interpretation how this crack is formed by seeing that defect discontinuity is formed if it may be a thermal crack lack of fusion broken lines of varying widths in the buildings uh, fatty cracks uh, continuous line and packs uh, very tight cracks series of very small dots in the continuous form so these are some of the interpretations there is a chance of a false detections also. The surface may be identified as a crack, but there is no crack. The, the chances are there. It is an acc accumulation of content caused by the drop of a content left on the workpieces. There are two conditions where we can be able to go for false indications. Number one, indications due to inadequate removal of during rains process. So we have applied. A, we have applied the water soluble or any solvent soluble, but even though after those things, some are fixed over there already. Already it is there. With respect to that, we are doing inspection again for some other purpose. Maybe second welding and second inspection. At the time, these indications also reflect there and we identify that surface as a crack because, because there is elderly dead, it's already there, but we want to clean, but we are not done properly. So maybe the uh, penetrant, maybe the contaminations. So if we identify this, maybe the contaminations are because it's not clean properly. And hand impressions also. Sometimes the hand impressions, but we keep there, maybe reflect. So second chances are there. Non-relevant indications caused by the actual surface discontinuities. You see, we have for sample what we have to identify, we are giving some names over there by punching actions, letter punchings or number punchings. So that also gives some irregular, uh, irregular uh, punching over this specimen. So this is, let, when we are applying this penetrant over there, this will come inside and falls over there. So at such cases, it will give some projections. The projections belongs to some letters and uh, numbers. But how we identify wrongly, how we indications are wrongly understood as a defect. So that is our false detections. Can be raised lettering to the identify parts or press fit parts. So kind of impressions maybe or uh, writing names or letters or numbers or maybe sometimes in the casting the sand particles are there it is very the texture is a smooth texture it's not a smooth texture it's a rough texture a sand rough texture sometimes we have a, a specimen a caster specimen which is some small uh, rough texture on the rough texture when i'm applying this uh, uh, penetrant what happens uh, on the rough texture it falls like this more. So we understood that the rough texture has some impressions, some cracks, like maybe wrong interpretations are possible. So those things are not to be taken care. I'm coming to some safety precautions. We are because we are using some penetrants, we are using some ultraviolet rays. So ultraviolet rays, heavy lamp light we are using. So that not we have to take care. First, I'm concentrating about the chemical safety here. In this chemical safety, you see. In this chemical safety, uh, number one is the flammability. We are using some penetrants and uh, uh, developers which should not be flammable. So definitely, uh, the flammability property to be greater than 95 degrees centigrade. So flammability to be greater than 95 degrees centigrade. 
So use exhaust fans to disperse the vapors. Ignition source must be avoided. Ignition ignition source must be avoided. Lighting or something else should be avoided. Skin irritations because of chemical safety. If your printer may be a chemical or maybe developer may be a chemical, so this should not affect there. Uh, wear gloves or protect hands. Wear safety glasses. Uh, protect eyes from the splashing of the printers. In case of ultraviolet fluorescence, uh, lamp get hotter. Somewhere when you're using it continuously for a lot of time, the lamp getting hotter and it burns also. So, report missing or cracked filter on the lamps. UV rays can be caused sunburn and eye damages. Eye damages may happen. Therefore, we have to use glasses or filters over there on the machine setups and we can use this. Applications we have, we came to the end. Uh, typical components like maybe a turbines or rotors or blades or aircraft, castings, forgings, or wind assemblies or in the aerospace. Similarly, in the tools and bays, uh, drill bits, uh, drill pipes, uh, casting equipments, uh, drilling equipments, maybe these are all used in the tools lathing process. Everywhere, maybe our intention crack to be there on the surface. Not a crack, a discontinuity. Maybe a porosity also. Um, any, anything which is connected to discontinuity, discontinuity on the surface, we can able to detect. So in the automobile sectors, maybe automobile castings, forging, maybe pistons or cylindrical heads, uh, all are related. Yeah, crack may come comes in cylindrical heads. Cracks may be in the piston also possible. Maybe on the surface. In the railways, we are using the same cracking in in-service uh, examinations. What is this in-service means? While it, while it is working, it is subjected to some vibrations. Due to the vibration, subject to some forces, and it may cause some tearing actions, cause some cracking. So that we have to consider. It is called in, in service and fabrication. Fabrication, we, we do inspection. It is okay. But when the same fabricated product, the, when it is subject to the in, in service, there is some application may be different. Load, loading cases may be different. So there is a chance of creation of crack. There also we should do inspection. In service inspection. So railway locomotive, buggy frames, inspections, uh, uh, reactors, maybe uh, tank vessels, reactors, uh, pipings, layers, uh, pipings of uh, maybe petroleum industries or boiler plants components we have to do in, in service and also in the fabrications. So advantages, this method has a high sensitivity to small surface discontinuities. By this method, the metallic or non-metallic or magnetic or non-magnetic. So you see, maybe a metallic or non-metallic, maybe a magnetic or non-magnetic, maybe a conductive or non-conductive, any materials. So any any materials we can able to do inspections. A large areas and the large volumes of parts of materials can be inspected rapidly because it is liquid, penetrant, and level. Simple. Our parts with complex geometry shapes are you know, routinely inspected. Indications are produced directly on the surface of the parts and consider the visual depressions of the flask. Aerosol spray can make uh, penetrant materials are very portable, and penetrant materials and the associated equipments are relatively inexpensive also here. Some limitations are there. Even though it is inexpensive, even though it is using a spray, uh, it will cost us less. Uh, we have some limitations also here. See, only surface breaking. So this is the only point we should concentrate here, uh, as because uh, uh, if it is a uh, crack in the uh, subsurface, not possible. Simply, this liquid content will not help. So only surface breaking effect can be detected. It cannot go inside the material, which we cannot see. From the outside. So, when the surface is inside, that this total inspections are taken place by our eye. We are keeping here and we are seeing here. Okay, so therefore, uh, the surface, if it is inside, no use. So, a material only with a relatively non porous surface can be inspected. So, if it is porous, I already told you, if it is porous, uh, we are, when we are pouring the liquid over there, uh, when we are pouring the liquid over there, it keeps on moving, it keeps on moving from there because it is porous. Uh, it responds. So it is not, uh, not possible to do liquid inspection here. Pre cleaning is critical since the contaminations may mask the defect. So, when we are doing cleaning operations, sometimes uh, uh, it may uh, fill, sometimes uh, this uh, um, cracks may be filled by the uh, chips. But during the lighting operations, chips may form or maybe cleaning may not be proper. Therefore, that uh, chips which are formed over there on the surface will block the penetrant going inside. So that's how the chances are there. So, pretty cleaning is uh, a critical must. 
post cleaning of the acceptable parts and materials is required to avoid uh, corrosion actions or to avoid some chemical reactions taking place. Metal chips from the machining, grinding, and grit and vapor blasting must be removed prior to DPA. So, this, this point is nothing but a pre training. Okay. Surface finishes and roughness can be affected inspection sensitivity. See, see uh, that's not one example I told you in the last slide about the casting texture. So, that is what here surface finishes and the roughness of the effect will affect the inspection sensitivity. So, this is this is all roughness and surface, this is all belongs to surface parts only. But we are not looking, our concentration is not the surface roughness. Our concentration is about the crack depth. But uh, uh, this also uh, it comes in red color. It confuses, maybe it leads to the false indications. So, inspector must have a direct access to the surface being inspector. Chemical handling due to toxicity and the flammability and the proper disposal is required. So, it should not be toxic, it should not be flammable, a flash point to be higher. All these things are belongs to limitations. So, for our understanding, I have given a comparison like a, maybe advantages and maybe the limitations as a, as a single point slide. You see, here the same thing I have given here for the comparison. Uh, simple, we can understand as a, a metallic or non metallic, a magnetic or non magnetic, connectivity or non connectivity. Maybe a large area or large volume can be inspected, maybe complex geometry also can be inspected. So, these are all I'm talking about advantages. So, maybe any locations can be given, maybe aerosol spray or maybe a portable can be easily printed to spray for a, um, this uh, developer spray we have to use. And if any material printed can be used there. Regarding the uh, limitation side, only surface is possible, only surface is possible and relatively non porous is required and pre cleaning is required here and post cleaning is required. Right? Maybe surface roughness may use some difficulty in the false indications false indications and inspector must have the direct access see this point is very uh, important point in the radiography a technician has to keep the film over there and the rays are passed film is taken somewhere it is went there and then after going somewhere it is uh, clean developed and then the inspector is going to inspect how it is uh, effects are there the result itself is through mandatory method of filming. But here results are through the visual inspections by the inspector the direct, directly on the specimen. The, direct, the inspector should go there to the spot, then see what is penetrated, what is developed and what is comes out, how the contrast is there and do inspection. So in such a way, the inspector presence is necessary there in, on the spot of the sample. So, chemical handling may be toxic and those things are disposals are getting difficult. So, these are the limitations and advantages. So, we came to the uh, summary of the session. We have seen about the dry printing inspections in the most widely used NDT method. And then uh, it is uh, located in all kind of uh, surface breakings only, not in the subsurface, so only surface surface breakings and veterans are classified in the basic of their physical properties maybe a removal technique like, like a water washable like a solvent uh, like we suspendable developers so all things things we have seen developer also classified in the same formats uh, and the proper health and the safety precautions also we have seen as of now and this is how we complete uh, the, the chapter of uh, a deep print inspection the remaining part of the subjects We'll see you in the next session. Thank you.